Hey everybody, uh, yes, work in progress number three, and um, yeah. So today I thought I'd go through how the tactical perception stuff should work out. I'm still in the process of finishing off the final formula for it. Uh, but I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of, of pretty much how it's working right now. Uh, with the use of some crappy graphics from the internet. So, we've got the soldier here. He's the the Doom Soldier, obviously. So, currently in the Unreal Engine, how it works is that you've got a perception radius around the character. This is for vision, by the way, not for anything else. Uh, everything else has its own type of perception. But we're talking about specifically vision here. So, the green circle represents the overall kind of maximum extent of perception for sight. And the Unreal Engine extends that a little bit by having a thing called the peripheral vision angle. So I've got that in sort of reddy, pinky kind of color here. So basically the soldier can see anything up to that radius uh, that's in front of him or you know within his sort of peripheral vision now the problem with that is that it's it's quite um it's quite binary right a guy anywhere in the sort of radius will get spotted and that's what a lot of you kind of i think probably don't like is that it's kind of it's just automatically on kind of thing and and obviously if the radius is large then the ai is is not very human like so to fix this what we're doing is we're changing the perception system so that it's got a few more physical characteristics inside its um, vision checks essentially so I'm changing it to be more of like a um, a probabilistic model rather than a fully sort of boolean on or off kind of thing so it's more about what is the probability of spotting this guy under these given situations um so the first part of it is that we add a bunch of curves now if you think of this enemy soldier as a sort of potential target then the question is what is important about spotting him and one of the things is that you, you actually focus your attention when you're viewing something you focus your attention more towards the center of your view than towards the side so we add a peripheral vision kind of check so if you see here the white areas represent sort of less vision and the darker areas present represent more vision so what you get i mean this is just a mock-up in photoshop but what you get is basically um a fall off as things get more towards your periphery and that changes based on some other stuff so I'll go into that in a second um, so there's that one there's the sort of peripheral curve um, and I'll show you how that will work in the engine in a second but um, the next one is a distance curve and you see this is kind of um, multiplying on top of it so the idea is that Obviously, the closer you are to the thing, the more you're likely to spot them because obviously they're filling your field of view more. So there's those two parts. There's distance and there's peripheral vision. And then the next part is an interesting one. So let's just add another enemy. Okay, so he's, he's actually a dead body now, but imagine he wasn't. Um, so the next part is the stance that the guy's in. So if a guy's laying down, he's less likely to be spotted, especially based on distance, than a guy who's standing up. Obviously, if the guy fires at you, then all bets are off, and that's actually going to be a different type of sense. Um, but again, it's it's a matter of, uh, you know, we're checking to see if the things are fully stood up. So, you know, crouching, going prone will obviously change the, the potential for being spotted another one is movement so um, it's kind of hard to show you on this but 
a guy who's prone moving around might be less visible than the guy who's standing up moving around. And again, a lot of these are down to sort of how you perceive things. And then one of the f sort of more important factors for us is stuff like this, right? So um, a cover value. So there's things like camouflage and cover and those, those kind of things. So what we get is a, a going away from a simple binary decision, or a simple sort of Boolean on or off, I can't see him, I can't see him thing, to a more probabilistic model, and that's kind of where I'm coming from with this. Um, and the reason why that's important is because then we can do some interesting calculations on all of these inputs. So these inputs are kind of separate values that feed into some kind of mathematical function. And that's the part I'm still kind of figuring out what is the sort of baseline mathematical function going to be. So just to sort of give you an example here, um, imagine we are taking the, the, the peripheral vision fall-off curve, um, which doesn't actually look like this right now, but imagine it was this curve. Now, if we add on top a sort of distance curve, we might figure out that uh, maybe we have a, a threshold to say this is the threshold where we will activate the the, um, the spotting. So basically anything that passes this threshold will be spotted. Um, you know, and then you could move... Oops, I got the wrong thing there. Threshold. So, you know, you can move the threshold line up and down to say how much could be spotted and how much can't be. Um, it could be that we really bad at Photoshop, aren't we? Uh, it could be that we sort of, you know, if we spot a character, we we look for like maybe we sum to mix two of these values up, and we look to see if the position of it is in inside the sum of both of those two values. Um, so basically, the mathematical function ends up being uh, a bunch of generally floating point values, uh, normalized floating point values, and a bunch of what we call response curves. So if we just um, pop into Unreal Engine here, let's just get out of Photoshop. Uh, oh, there's the other thing I've been... So the AI that we're gonna do for Ground Branch is also meant to be for um, for general use in the Unreal Engine. So I've been spending a bit of time this week making it so that it's um, a plugin. And that means that we get in the editor um, more you know, like user interface stuff they can do. And eventually it'll have a drop down like a lot of these things, you know. So there'll be a bunch of options here for things like. So this menu will be like rebuild the um, cover point graph and that kind of stuff. But for now, what I wanted to show you is, uh, if we look at the perception component, this is the tactical sense that I've been adding. And basically, it's using a lot of those values that I was just talking about, the cover probability. So essentially, these are um, f mathematical values, or, or in this case, just data values, uh, that you can tweak as a designer that will go into the mathematical function and and I'm trying to figure out a way of exposing that function so that you can alter the characteristics of the, the AI perception um, in some useful way and I'm not sure I mean obviously you could alter it here but I want you to be able to alter it in game as well so that's something I'm still working on but let's let's have a look at the peripheral vision um, as an example so the idea here is that you can have a bunch of curves and a bunch of um, cover probabilities and that kind of thing so how much how much does the fact that you're in cover affect the overall um, chance of you spotting somebody and that kind of thing so you can you basically you can say okay so cover is really important or you know if we go to zero it's just you know covers not important at all so they're all normalized values basically between one and zero um, and if we go into the peripheral vision, this is kind of what I was talking about. So basically, uh, the the curve editor in Unreal is not 
brilliant, but you'll see what I mean. Um, this is the peripheral vision, right? So it's between 0 and 1 in both directions. And the idea is that mostly within your like absolute field of view, you'll have pretty much perfect eyesight and then it'll fall off quickly as it gets into your sort of periphery. So you might do a curve like this, you might just sort of edit it um, up to be a bit smoother, you know. So maybe we'll get this guy and bring him down, automate. Mm -hmm. Why is that one? Whatever. Yeah, the, the curve editor is not the best in the world. But you'll see what I mean. Essentially, you can kind of edit the response for the AI using these curves. And that should just give you a bit more, more of a human-like feel to the responses to things like spotting and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I've been working on for the last sort of week or so. Uh, I shall show you a demo of this stuff in action sometime probably early next week now, or maybe over the weekend if I can get time to do it. It's probably something that's quite subtle, so you won't necessarily see it in play, but you'll just feel it as a sort of, you'll feel it as more, hmm, how shall I put it? It should feel like a more humanoid response. That's the theory anyway. And you know, it's built up around sci sound sort of psychological principles, so that should help out a fair bit. So that's the perception system. Um, I say once once I've done the demo for that, I'm going to be moving on to um, cover point generation because it's something I've been looking at the engine for, um, and we need that to be able to sort of move the soldiers around in a reasonable way, you know, make them find cover and get good firing positions and that kind of stuff. So that's what I'll be working on next, and obviously extending some of that stuff. Right now, it just brings up an empty window, but obviously this will eventually be a whole toolbox of stuff that you can do so things like you know regenerate cover um edit some data for the different ai maybe edit the ai's uh what to call it <sighs> difficulty levels it might be that that brings up the sort of you know some of the options i might even use it to test out a sort of zeus mode kind of thing actually but obviously that wouldn't be in game which is probably not what i want i'll probably do it in game one Anyway, so there you go. Some more progress on the AI. I shall update you um, next week, hopefully. And thanks for watching.